that you know 99% of the theories out there or the beliefs of people out there are that we humans our forefathers Cro-Magnons or Cro-Magnon uh, we had something to do with the extinction of the Neanderthals. We either killed them, outcompeted them, had sex with them, you know, there, there's all these theories that we had something to do with it. And so the first question comes up is whether we did have something to do with them, right, with, with their extinction. And uh, we can make the assumption, you know, if Mother Nature takes out humans out of the equation, would Neanderthals be around? <laughs> and uh, we do have a little evidence to show that this would, uh, that, you know, that we have little to do with the extinction of Neanderthals. We have Man of Java, uh, Indonesian man, you know, he uh, lived around maybe 800,000 years ago in the island of Java in Indonesia. We have Man of Pekin. We don't have his uh, head anymore, his uh, skull anymore, but they made a um, you know, a little mock-up of it, and um, and he was also like maybe 700,000, 800,000 years ago in China. And these were Homo erectus level uh, specimens. And, uh, you know, these two guys died. Uh, they did not evolve into a Heidelberg level type of, of uh, hom hominid or into a Neanderthal or into a human. They, their lineage just whittled out and died. What year did they date those? Again, they dated these to about 700,000, 800,000 years ago. So these died. And so species do die. They don't all evolve. To, yeah. to think that, that they all uh, evolve and to think that we had something to do with it, Java man and Peking man, uh, you know, they, they, um, they, uh, they, bunk, they, 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 yeah, they debunk it this, and this and notion, right? And, and then uh, you've got the other issue, uh, which I always bring up, and that's, uh, you know, you have uh, five Neanderthals, the last five Neanderthals in a cave, and a stone falls and kills all five of them. Those are the last five Neanderthals. Does it make sense to say, well, you know, a rock caused the extinction of the Neanderthals? Yeah, technically it did, but how did they end up with five Neanderthals? So if humans came into Europe and uh, assuming, you know, we either admixed with them or killed them or outcompeted them or whatever, if Neanderthals were already in decline, that's what we have to explain. And not the fact that we gave them, you know, the, the we were the final straw yeah, that broke the camel's the back. the last Neanderthal died of a heart attack, you can't say right, heart that, attacks that, that caused, the... Right, and that's the point. And, and there, there's a little bit of that as well. You know, if Neanderthals were already in decline, and a lot of um, studies and uh, a lot of the paleontologists have this notion, this gut feeling that they were already in decline, that was a very sparse, very low-dense population, and that we came in there... Uh, finished them it, off? To, like, we finished them off, fine, we finished them all, let's assume, yeah, we killed them, but then they were already in decline, they already had sparse population, they had low density, we have to explain that, how did they end up with that, that's what we have to explain. But, okay, the number one theory is admixture, admixture says we interbred with them, we had sex with them, and uh, their genes got diluted in our bigger population, right? But then the question here is um, whether we could interbreed with them. You <laughs> that know, sounds like a good question. Yeah, I mean, uh, and, and, the, and the prior question to that is whether we were of the same species or we were just two races within a species. For this, we need to define our terms properly. Uh, you know, a bloodhound can have sex with a poodle. Uh, Doberman with, uh, I don't know, a uh, German Shepherd. Because they're all dogs. They're all the same species. They're different races. Because they can have offspring. Uh, what did I say? They can have sex. Uh, I, well, I, I, I can have sex with a dog, too. <laughs> well, yeah, but uh, I, I, a dog would want to have sex with a dog, hopefully not with a chimp or with a chicken, you know. But, yeah, they had sex and they had children. In other words, um, they have viable children. You, you can have, uh, you know, again, Doberman with uh, German Shepherds. And they could have kids. They could have fertile kids, especially specifically fertile. And uh, and so the question is whether we could do the same. Uh, were we 
different uh, races of the same species, or were we two different species? For this, we have to define the term species and race. Where would you categorize ligers and tigons? Because they're not because they're sterile, but they are offspring of two different races. And and that's why I like to define the term uh, species as not only interbreeding, not only that they can have children and they can have successful offspring, but they can do it in the wild and that the hybrid that is born from that uh, mixture is also fertile. In other words, he can propagate the, the, the race or, or the, yeah, the, it would be a race in that case. So I like to distinguish that race from species. Race is they can have sex and have Fertile offspring, no problem. In the wild, that's important too. What's the difference? Between? Because in a zoo, you can put a tiger and a lion together and they have ligers and tigons. Yeah, but they're sterile. Yeah, but even assuming they were good, but you can do it in, in a controlled uh, environment, in a lab, you know? But the question, would a lion get together with a tiger out there in the wild? Because they have cultural differences. The lion, the lion, for example, is a, is a social animal, whereas the tiger is a lonely, you know, he, he works all by himself. And the reason I bring this up is, here I have a, a statement from Chris Stringer. He's, a, he's a, a prominent paleontologist. And he says this about the Neanderthals, and this puts this whole thing in the proper light. Neanderthals had distinct behavior, and they evolved under different conditions from us. So I still think it's useful to keep them as separate species, even if we remember that that doesn't necessarily preclude interbreeding. So I got a problem with that because he's saying even if they could uh, interbreed, even if they could have sex, they're two different species. But then we have a violation of the definition. How does he def define species? Well, that's the point. The point is you yeah. got a contradiction with the definition. If we're going to define species as interbreeding, yeah. we cannot say, well, yeah, uh, you know, the, uh, they could interbreed, but they were two different species. We can't say that because we're contradicting our, our we, we have to be able to use these terms consistently in a scientific Obviously. discussion, right? And uh, one of the uh, main um, definitions, or the primary definition out there, is one that was uh, put out by Ernst Meyer, and this was, uh, got it here, 1942, and he defines it as such, the word species. He says, species are groups of, of actually or potentially interbreeding natural populations uh, which are reproductively isolated from other such groups. In other words, Meyer defined it as interbreeding. And that's interbreedable. Interbreedable, yeah, that, that they could breed and have uh, offspring. And the, uh, I think most people have that notion yeah. of species. And that's how I want to use the word, you know. And so the question is, you know, when the humans became a species, and were they the same species as the Neanderthals? By this I mean, could they have sex and fertile offspring with a Neanderthal? Yeah. And here you have a couple of, um, of uh, ideas where we got our notion of when the human species started. And you'll see throughout the internet, or wherever you look, that everybody more or less puts it 200,000 years ago. You heard of mitochondrial Eve, and she's 200,000 years old now. <laughs> so humanity started 200,000 years ago. Yeah, and where did they get this? They, they, and, uh, you know, there's uh, these uh, studies out there, and that's where we got these ideas, where why 200,000 years? Here you have one. Um, it says, estimate of the age of Kibish, Omo. Homo hominids is 195,000 plus or minus 5,000 years, making them the earliest well-dated anatomically modern human yet described. And here you have another one that says it comes from the Behavioral Sciences Department in uh, California. Our species of humans first began to evolve nearly 200,000 years ago. Remember the word species, right? A 195,000-year-old fossil from Omo 1 site in Ethiopia shows the uh, beginnings of the skull changes that we associate with modern people. Uh, in other words, what they're saying is about 200,000 years ago there was this uh, human, or archaic human, or as close to human as possible, uh, and he's 200,000 years old and he's in uh, but, this a site called Omo in Ethiopia. But they right? determine that with, from the bone shape. Yeah, they look at the skull. There's no way of knowing if we could breed with that. No, no, right. But, but this is, I'm going to show you also another little bit of evidence here. But this is the first evidence. They say, look, 
Here we found a skull that looks more or less human, what we would call human, or it's getting approaching human, partly because of the size of the, uh, the cranial cavity. You know, this, this, this guy's approaching us. He's uh, like 14... 1,450 uh, cubic centimeter, we have 1,500. Cranial so that's, cavity is this Yeah, it's uh, the hole inside your head, you know. And so the cranial cavity of this guy 200,000 years ago is very close to human. So we have to believe that he had something to do with our lineage. Uh, we have another one, Idaltu, man, he's also from Ethiopia, 160,000 years ago. And then recently they, uh, they uh, figured out the uh, man from Irhud from uh, Morocco. They say he's 300,000 years ago and he's a, his brain is a little smaller, you know, but the point is all these approach the human cavity, the size of the cavity, right? So they think they were somehow our ancestors and the best number they can give is 200,000 years. In fact, here you'll see, you know, that if you look at Homo habilis, he had um, 600 cubic centimeters. Uh, when you get down to Homo erectus, he's got anywhere from 900 to 1100. He, he spanned a, quite a long time. Then you get to 1200 with Homo uh, heidelbergensis, possibly also Rhodesiensis in Africa. And then finally you get to Neanderthal and humans, they have like 1500. So it's like, you know, the, the, the brain size is expanding and that's more or less how they determine these things, right? And that's one way. The other way is genetic. One way, of what? Uh, one way of determining that humans uh, are species, right? The human species, modern man, started, uh, started 200,000 years ago. They look at the brain size, they look at where they found it in the rock layer. Does this head more or less look like ours, you know, and that, and that kind of thing. And on the other side, they have genetics, and that also points to 200,000 years ago. Here we have. Uh, uh, an entry in the, uh, for the word mitochondrion in the Encyclopedia Britannica. It says, research has shown that fragments of the mitochondrial genome carried by all humans alive today can be traced to a single woman ancestor living an estimated 150 to 200,000 years ago. What does that, that mean? That's the mitochondrial E. That means we can all trace our lineage to her in a, in a sense, right? That, that she was like the mother of humanity, right? And then here you have another one from um, 2011, uh, Callaway. Homo sapiens, uh, which emerged in Africa only around 200,000 years ago. So this is the number that's being kicked around. All this has to do with genetics. Where did they get that? Well, they got it from a seminal uh, study, 1987, CAN. Uh, mitochondrial DNA stemmed from one woman who is postulated to have lived about 200,000 years ago, probably in Africa. They do a, uh, a genetic study, right? And they, and they do these um, uh, regression analysis. And they say, well, if we have so many mutations every so often, we take that back, we end up 200,000 years ago. That's where we think there should have been uh, our mother, the mother of humanity. But that was so, one, one corpse. Yeah, no, 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 this has nothing to do with getting to a woman. This has to do with just a regression analysis that's saying, if we have so many mutations every so often, yeah. uh, on the average, if we take that back, we, we can come to the point where the, uh, the first mitochondrial, uh, mitochondrial uh, DNA that we have today started about 200,000 years ago. Okay. And so we have on the one side the genetic study that says 200,000 years ago, on the, on the finds, on the actual skeletons on the skulls, we find also around 200,000 years. We have, you know, several s skeletons out there, and we got to keep that in, in, in perspective. If we had 1,000 or, you know, 10,000 skulls, this would be an easy game, you know. we just put them out there and say, well, uh, now we can see exactly what happened here. But they have only five or six skulls, and from that they have to infer... Yeah. Or much. speculate, you know, what could have happened. So they have all these bits and pieces, different regions, different skulls, and, and uh, you know, they try to figure out, you know, try to figure out the history of humans from these five skulls. It's like a puzzle, and you're yeah. having five pieces in like, order. Is this like an elephant? Five, is this a dragon? What is this? Yeah, you know? I have five pieces. You don't know. <laughs> trying to find out where the puzzle pieces go without the puzzle pieces. But what is the problem with all this? If, if humans, if our species interbreeding, Right? If our species started 200,000 years ago, that means, by definition of the word species, right, if we're going to use this word consistently, 
That means we can only interbreed with someone 200,000 years ago. We That's, can't breed with Neanderthals. I would say we could not if, if we didn't use the word species correctly and scientifically. If our species started 200,000 years ago, we could not interbreed with Neanderthal, with Heidelberg, or with Homo erectus. We could not, if we find a Homo erectus today that's got only, only 900 cubic centimeters of, of cranial capacity, he's more like a monkey, or like, you know, he's a missing link in, you know, like between monkeys and us. Could we interbreed with that guy? So to summarize, you know, uh, we have to use the word species correctly. That's one issue. And if a species, if our species started 200,000 years ago, then that means we could not interbreed with anyone before that. Otherwise, the person giving the presentation has to define the word species for you. What, Re what do you mean? Yeah. yeah, what do you mean by species? Yeah. You know, if species is interbreeding, could we interbreed? So what do you think of people who think that they descend from the Neanderthals? Well, let me tell you what I think. Come on, bongo!